everybody, I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you how to grill Napa Jack's sweet and spicy pulled pork shoulder picnic roast. That's kind of a mouthful, but I want to make sure that anyone looking up anything like this is going to find it because a lot of people might not know that a pork shoulder picnic roast can be used for a wonderful pulled pork. It's a great cut and we're going to throw it on the grill today and get some nice smoke on it and stuff. It is snowing a little bit, but we're going to get outside any darn way. I have my grill preheating on a high heat right now and I'm kind of going to do a little bit of an unorthodox um, cooking method and just bear with me, you're going to love it, okay? So I've got this picnic roast. This is about five and a half pounds. It's really heavy. It's got a lot of connective tissue. It has a lot of nice fat on the back and you want to keep that fat because it's going to be wonderful. It's going to turn into like this charred bark that is going to be just full of flavor. All right, so I'm going to cut through this fat, uh, through the fat, but not all the way through to the skin. I just want this to be able to kind of render a little easier. Plus, it's going to kind of allow you to get your spices in there a little bit better too. Everything's going to kind of melt into that fat. So you're going to see that you're going to split that fat open. Again, don't go all the way through to the meat. You're going to need a super sharp knife. Gorgeous. Take your time. It's not a race. And I'm also going to go the opposite direction for the same reason. It's going to make a nice design and get help those spices get in there. All that flavor. That's just flavor. Now this roast has to go for a long time, okay? Whether you're gonna do it in your oven, whether you're gonna do it in a Dutch oven, whether you're gonna do it on the grill, you need like four, five hours to do it properly, okay? And to really do it well and have that meat just kind of falling off the bone. So here I'm gonna do this side too. Make sure you get all of it. So just work your way around on that fat. All right, I'm preheating my grill on a super high heat right now outside. Um, especially since it's super cold and you want to scrape your grill off, make sure it's all nice and clean. I am going to get together a spice rub. I'm going to my trusty rusty go-to. This is my favorite dry spice rub for meats. Uh, it's nice on veg as well, good on poultry. Uh, I'm going to tell you what's in here and I'm quickly going to put it together. Use whatever kind of rub you want. Uh, you can use a purchased one or you can make your own. So this is mine. I have three tablespoons of brown sugar one teaspoon of dry ground mustard. I have one and a half teaspoons of salt, sea salt. I have one and a half tablespoons of black pepper, one heaping tablespoon of ancho chili powder. Now, ancho chili powder isn't super hot and spicy. It kind of tastes like a little bit of a spicy raisin. Um, it's kind of a, just a nice flavor enhancer. It's kind of sweet and it's very smoky. I have one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. There's your spice, along with that black pepper. And I have two heaping teaspoons of sweet smoked paprika, which is absolutely lovely. You have a kaleidoscope of colors in here, and you're just gonna use your hands, mix that through, break up the brown sugar, and get that all mixed. The flavor is unreal. You have that gorgeous mustardy flavor, nice spice, a nice roundness. That mustard goes a long way too. So here's our gorgeous spice rub that we're gonna use. It's nice and sweet, super spicy, full of flavor. Next, I'm going to get this whole roast covered in some mustard, and not just any mustard. I'm using Napa Jack's Sweet and Spicy Mustard, and this is what it looks like. Make sure you check out my review on it and a whole bunch of recipes I've done. I've got spices all over me, and that's the fun of cooking, right? Anyhow, you can check them out online at winecountrykitchens.com for this mustard as well as their whole line of mustards and great condiments. They've got marinades and sauces and spices and you name it, oils and things that just make all the difference in your cooking. And this is going to be a great base to start with here. Now this is a coarse Dijon mustard. It's wonderful. I'll tell you what's in here. Country Dijon mustard, uh, vinegar, wine, mustard seed, salt, white wine. Uh, spices, sugar, and dried chili. So you have a beautiful array of ingredients here with great flavor. You have kind of this little chunky bits. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. So it's gonna kind of get into those nooks and crannies you just cut open, and then it's gonna help adhere the spice rub you just created. But I'm gonna thin it out just slightly and sweeten it up a little bit more too. I'm gonna use at least a nice two heaping teaspoons, I would say, of this mustard. And I'm going to use maybe a teaspoon or so, two teaspoons of some apple cider. If you want to use apple cider vinegar, please feel free to do that. And it's just kind of thinned it out a little bit. Okay, 
sweetness is going to be wonderful. Also, we're going to baste this thing throughout the four or five hours it's on the grill with some apple cider. So it's kind of going to be just perfect that way. Ready? All right, this is going to be kind of messy, but that's the fun. So let's turn this over. I'm going to baste it with this mustard. Get it in there. If you need to make more of either the spice rub or the uh, mustard concoction we've got going on, just make it a little extra depending on how big yours is or how much you really want to put on there. Go nuts if you want. All right, so that's on that side. And I'm just going to sprinkle generously with this rub. And we're going to kind of push it in there, rub it in, massage it. And we're going to repeat on the whole entire roast until it's covered. You can save this spice rub if you don't use it all, but as long as you haven't put your hands in it like I'm doing. So if you only want to take a little bit at a time, go ahead and do that. I'll probably use this whole bowl on it. So, Okay, so it's just kind of like painting and then sticking on wallpaper <laughs> with the dry rub. She already looks beautiful. This is a labor of love. Flip it back over. We're gonna do the same thing. Get that mustard all over. Paint him up. That's just an extra layer of flavor. Who doesn't like flavor? Once you're satisfied that all those nooks and crannies are covered. So once you have this whole thing coated up, we're ready to throw it on the grill, get things ready. I also have some apple wood chips soaking in water. They've been soaking for maybe 30 minutes or an hour. And I'm gonna put them in a, an aluminum foil packet and throw it on the grill at the same time so we have some smoke. And then we'll continue to do that. Once the smoke runs out, you just continue to put a new packet on there. All right, look at this. Whew. So that's what we've got going on right now. The uh, rub and the mustard are just kind of soaking into all those little crevices. Wonderful. I gotta get my jacket so we can go outside. My um, barbecue is preheated on high heat. And let's make this quick uh, package for our wood chips. Applewood is wonderful. You could use hickory, mesquite, whatever the heck you have on hand or whatever you'd like. All right, so I'm gonna use half of these right now. And I'm just gonna kind of make a burrito shape. Get those soaking. The uh, liquid, the water that soaks into those chips is what's gonna make some nice smoke. So we're gonna kind of roll it like a burrito, but we'll... so wrap up the sides, bring it up to the center, and I'm gonna leave some holes here for a little bit of a chimney so that smoke can slowly but surely ooze out. I have two pieces because I'm gonna have to put another bunch of uh, chips on later and maybe even some more. So make sure you have some chips on hand if you want it extra smoky. All right, we're ready to go outside. All right, get yourself a junky roaster, okay? You don't want to use a new one or a nice one. This one has just been uh, through it in the barbecue, but it makes good food. So <laughs> get yourself a junky roaster so you don't feel bad about wrecking it. I have myself a rack that I'm going to sit my pork shoulder on and everything can drip off into this pan like a drip pan, okay? I'll see you outside. All right, I think the neighbors are gonna be upset because it sure is gonna smell good and for hours out here, everyone's gonna be hungry. All right, so we've got this gorgeous picnic roast going on. And instead of just roasting it right in the drip pan right away uh, under this beautiful heat and smoke, I'm going to char it as quickly as possible. That's why I've preheated my barbecue at such a high heat. I wanna sear it on all sides just quick to get a little bit of char. Then I'm gonna throw it in the drip pan and we're gonna rock and roll. So gotta be careful. What I've got prepared is two large tongs because that's a big piece of meat. You're gonna need some extra help. So get two large tongs out and let's go. So what I like to do is get um, a clean rag that I use specifically for these kinds of things in the kitchen. And I have some vegetable oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you like. I'm just gonna soak that into this towel on one side and I'm just gonna roll that in, okay? Happy, happy. So roll that up into like um, a roll. Use your tongs and coat those grates before you throw meat right on there. That's gonna kind of be your non-stick help. Instead of using uh, spray, you can do this. And I think it coats the grates a lot better than just using some spray. All right, dirty, see, use rags. All right, now that my grate is prepared, on goes the pork. I'm going to do the really fatty side first. Boom, right on. 
do not walk away. Stay right here. That's a lot of fat, and you don't want things just going and big fire. Try and get all those spices on. <clears throat> don't waste any of it. Ooh, that's sizzling. It smells so good. All right, so try not to move your roast around until you see some good grill marks on it. Uh, you want to leave it in one spot. It might take a little while for that fat and the sugars to kind of caramelize. But once you see a nice char, then you're going to flip it. Use those tongs or you can get these great silicone gloves. Uh, and I'm going to show you what kind of char I'm looking at here. That's what I want. Look at that. Flip it over. Do the same thing on that side. We'll see in a few minutes. Now don't be afraid of fire. Fire is your friend. You just don't want excessive fire. That is one more gorgeous looking roast. All right, so I'm turning off the one side of the burner right now. I'm gonna turn the middle off in a second as well once I'm done charring, okay? So let's get this prepared. I'm putting this roasting pan right here on that far grate, and I'm gonna pour a little bit of water underneath here. Put that rack in. I just don't want things to get too, too dry. If you see that the water is going away, add a little bit more. You're also gonna get a lot of fat in there and you don't want that to just go up in flames either. So the water is gonna help, you know, alleviate that a little bit. Oh, that looks good. This has formed a beautiful crust already. It's got this, that mustard and the fat and the sugars have all just combined and made like a bark. Woo. If you're able to stand the butt on one side and let it sit there for a little while, That'd be a great thing to do too, and get all sides charred. If you can't do that safely, then no worries. Let's take a quick look again. Oh, almost there. Another minute. All right, let's see if I can set it on its side, because this side looks wonderful. Yep, I'm just gonna hold it here with my gloves. That kind of really helps a lot. These gloves are wonderful. When you put the roast in your pan to finish roasting, after charring like this, what I want you to do is put the fattiest side on the top. What's going to happen is the fat's going to render and it's going to keep your meat nice and juicy and moist and flavorful. All right, that's all I can stand. So here, this is the fattiest part, this side, and that's going to go on top. Okay, right onto this. Put it right on your rack. Look at that steam. We're cooking in Canada. All right, indirect heat. I'm turning off the middle element as well, and I'm gonna close this up after I put my wood chips in, apple wood chips. You want that right on top of that fire. That's gonna give a lot of nice smoke. Now, I wanna see if I can keep it around 250 degrees. Again, this is gonna take like three or four hours to do properly and really do it right. You wanna make sure that that meat is 195 degrees inside the meat. And uh, that's when you will be completely done. But in the meantime, we're going to let that just soak in all this smoke. It's going to be awesome. This would be perfect for Father's Day when it's nice and sunny and, and warm and barbecue weather. Uh, it would be great for tailgating. Uh, us Canadians, we're kind of crazy like this. We like, still like our barbecue. We can't go a whole winter without barbecuing. So I see that my temperature is going up, even though I only have one burner on. So I have to turn this down. And you're just going to gauge it. You want to come out here and keep checking it and making sure it's staying at around 250. All right. So in the meantime, I guess I'll see you periodically throughout this. Or All right. I've come out here and it's starting to go down a little bit. And I, so I've turned it right down. 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That is awful. Um, so I'm going to come out here every periodically make sure all is well nothing's on fire and nothing's burning and it should be just fine make sure that your apple or your whatever kind of wood chips you're using or pellets charcoal pellets are still you know smoking make sure if you're using a charcoal grill you have it maintaining the right heat you have to add a little more charcoal possibly and make sure that the drip pan has enough water in it as well to keep things nice and moist and going so beautiful so the key here is to make sure that you keep your um, top shut that's going to create an oven effect so if you're not going to do it in the oven that's how you do it out here all right i'll be out here periodically all right boy is it ever cold the snow held out but man it's cold all right this thing looks amazing i don't know if you can really see it but i've been out here basting every 30 minutes this has been on for at least four hours at this point and i'm maintaining the temperature around 270 ish okay my last baste, I 
think we're nearly there. I'm going to take a quick um, temperature of this thing. You want it to be 195 in the center, so if you take it off at 190, it'll raise five more degrees after you do so. So you need it to get to 190. Let's see what we got. All right, we're at 180. We're almost there. A couple more minutes. Let me show this to you. Wow, look at that. It is just absolutely beautiful. Look at that, just smoking. The smell, I wish you had smell a vision for real. Look at that, glistening. Look at the char on it. That's beautiful bark. All right, back in for another maybe 10, 15 minutes. You'll see me then. All right, this should be done. I'm gonna take it in and it needs to rest for about 20 minutes before I start ripping it apart and serving it. So let's go inside, turn everything off. Ooh. All right, so this is very hot from outside and it needs to rest for about 20 minutes. Um, so I've just loosely put some aluminum foil, a nice little tent over here, just to keep things warm and let those juices kind of chill out for a minute. If you cut into this right now or tried to pull this apart, you would just lose all the juice and you'd have dry pulled pork. It wouldn't be very nice. So you will be very upset that you spent all this time <laughs> getting this just cooked just right so slowly uh, that you're gonna lose all that moisture you don't want that so let it rest chill out I, I guess I should show you what uh, beautiful piece of meat this is look at this beautiful charred bark don't be scared that's just blackened spices it's totally fine it's gonna be absolutely perfect and it's gonna be the most delicious stuff you've had so let that just chill out what a beautiful roast Wow all right, I've actually let this sit for about 30 minutes. I wanna make sure I can handle it. I need to be able to pull this apart and I don't wanna burn myself. So I'm gonna transfer it over to my cutting board. I've got some good juices in here. Let me show you this gorgeous piece of meat now that you get a better look at it here. Look at this. Look at all around, you have that beautiful crust. It's amazing. I whipped up another batch of my spice rub because I always like to sprinkle that on <laughs> as well, fresh, when I'm eating. All right, let's cut some of this off and show you what's going on in here. I'll try and get some of this uh, bark off to show you. It's crispy. Fat has just, oh, it's just kind of falling off. Look at that, just pulling apart. That's what you want, pulled pork, right? That stuff is still seamy in there. All this bark is crispy. You should see this. Oh, crispy on the outside, and then it's kind of gelatinized on the inside. Oh, mm. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I like to try and use a fork and just kind of pull the meat away. You're gonna see it just kind of shreds in its own individual directions. It's striations. There's different directions in here. Sometimes you get a roast that um, has been tied and rolled, so you might have different direction of muscle fibers. And that's just falling apart, look at that. So just take a nice big fork and pull those fibers apart. They'll come apart really easily. Beautiful stringy bits, amazing. Look at this. Who wouldn't want this on a sandwich or just as, a, as your entree with some sides? Oh. It's beautiful, it's moist, it has tons of flavor. As this meat cools, it pulls apart a lot easier. So you may have to wait just a little while longer if you find that you're having a hard time, right? And just break that up for everybody, you know? Amazing. Mom, would you like some? Oh, I would love it. I've been waiting. Mmm. <laughs> so hungry. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. It is so smoky. That is some good, good pulled pork. Look at that. That's what I'm gonna give mom. What? Mmm. Mm. It smells so good, I can hardly wait to eat it. Oh, mom, wait till you do. It's delicious. Yeah? Oh. And you just get a little bit of bark with your serving, and it's just enough, it's really spicy. But it's so delicious. Oh, it's so tender, Kim. Yeah, you like that? 
look at this these pieces just coming off of here come on oh with a little bit of that char in every bite come on that's good stuff and that's how you do pulled pork look at this whoa that is something so if you wanted to you could always cut up some of extra bark with a nice sharp knife of course you like that I put lots of brown sugar in my in my rub and I, I think I forgot to say three quarters of a teaspoon of cumin goes in there as well so you cut up this bark and then you mix that gummy stuff all in with your pork now that is a gorgeous pile of meat deliciousness So you can see why this is a labor of love. It takes a lot of time, it takes some preparation, and it takes uh, patience. <laughs> you know, uh, it is glorious. These, this jelly-like crispy skin on the outside is just full of flavor. That sweet and spicy mustard does a wonderful job. You can even, when you're crunching on that bark, you can feel the little grains of mustard. Hey, mom? Oh, it's so good. And then the spice rub just stuck right to it, and they just married in a perfect crust. Look at that pulled pork. I don't think you can make it taste any better. No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good. I like getting a little chunk and being able to pull it apart itself. I know. Oh. And not it, it not being fully, you know, shredded. Right. Mm. This is wonderful for breakfast in breakfast tortillas. This would be awesome for tailgating, Father's Day, any kind of barbecue all summer long, Memorial Day, Victoria Day, Labor Day, any of the days. Mm. That's pretty awesome. Let me feed everybody. Mm -mm -mm. So this is one gorgeous tray of pulled pork. I don't think that anyone could argue that. <laughs> Make sure you check out winecountrykitchens.com for this awesome, awesome Dijon mustard. It is delicious. This the Napa Jack's sweet and spicy mustard. You're going to love this. Yes, and you know, you just get that little tang of mustard with every bite. Yeah, you do. so good. Yeah. That sweetness, oh my goodness, it's good. I agree. And the sweet and spicy base in the mustard just goes perfectly with the sweet and spicy and the mustard in the spice rub. So, you know, you're just carrying through the theme. I mean, what could be terrible about that? And it is, look at this, just falling apart. Look at, just like sh cheese shreds. Look at this. Mm. Like mozzarella shreds. Yes. Yum. So good. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> so make sure you're serving everyone while it's hot. And that's why I have to go. Mmm, mmm, mmm. 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 So that's it. That's how you grill Napa Jack's sweet and spicy pulled pork shoulder picnic roast. You're going to love this. You can do this. Don't be scared of this at all. It just takes time. That's it. Labor of love. Now serve this. We're serving this with rice tonight and some veg, but you can choose whatever you want. You could do potatoes. You could do french fries. You could do just on pulled pork, like on sandwiches. The sky's the limit. Black-eyed peas, dirty rice, whatever. I think anything would go perfectly with this pulled pork. <laughs> That's it. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly. YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. You can find my channel on Roku Cooking with Kimberly. And I'm also syndicated on Apple TV and Amazon. Come to my website at CookingWithKimberly.com and subscribe. Interact with us and let us know what's going on in your culinary world. All right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.